Hello, everybody who joined us today. It's me, Phil Brzezin, and here with me, Mike Ferreira from USA. And we're going to be talking about the notorious topic of ancient minor earth. <laughs> Mike, Mike hosts a group, uh, Ancient Minor Earth, on Facebook. You can find the link in the description and join it. It's a fast growing topic. I think uh, in a year or two, everybody's going to be talking about it. So, Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing good. Philip, how are you doing? Pretty much fine, except that it's hot than hell. <laughs> and uh -huh. like, yeah, we have a, a record breaking temperatures all week, week long. So I, I don't know if it's a uh, weather modification or just a coincidence. So who knows, actually? Hmm. Is it a, hot, a humid hot? It's like Cuban hot, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. Uh, I think the best uh, summer I, I've experienced was the summer in San Francisco, which was cold and um, then, you know, <laughs> then Siberian winter. But, you know, what what is your region famous with? Uh, I was known for corn. Uh, you have, uh, I mean, weather, weather. Oh, weather. Oh, I'm sorry. Weather. Uh, well, Iowa gets like the, the worst weather. We get the hottest summers and the coldest and cold winters. Uh, just pretty much like Siberia is. Yeah, we get uh, like our our summers are are humid, and our winters are just are cold. Yeah, you yeah. have you have you you have snow. That yes, that it, yeah, yeah, we that definitely it. get snow, snow and ice. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so before we start, uh, I think everybody should check out uh, Mike Ferrero's group one one more time. Uh, I, I I'm not advertising it. I'm just recommending a bunch of footage there, so you can better check it out by yourself. In enlarge it, you know, take a look. It's a lot better than you just watch it in the video. But video is fine because you can ask questions, guys. Everybody in chat, you can ask questions today, and we probably be checking out questions on topic of course and uh, answering them after Mike done presenting what he wanted to show us today okay so Mike I'm gonna put your screen if you want a screen share okay and uh, let's go all right are we all good you see on my screen yep all right uh, today we're gonna kind of talk about caves I'm gonna talk about caves today um, <clears throat> But first, let's talk about lightning fulgurites. Uh, I forget if we've talked about fulgurites before, Philip. But, yeah, we uh, did. We did. Uh, fulgurite basically is where uh, lightning hits the ground and uh, the electrical charge travels through the ground and creates a fulgurite. Uh, some fulgurites are hollow and some are, are semi-hollow and some are solid. Uh, the shapes that uh, uh, the, of the fulgurites basically mimic the shapes of the branches of lightning. And there's another example. And uh, where I put these red circles is uh, uh, are are contours that that you see uh, in almost all the spaces between the branches uh, of the lightning bolt. There's this is a certain kind of tab-like looking thing that you see all the time. And so I, I circled those so you could see them. And because then when you look at other things, you can see that same tab mark on other kinds of things like rocks and minerals and uh, the shapes of states, the shapes of lakes and, and things like that. Um, and, then, and like I said, the fulgurite is shaped like the, the shape of the lightning bolt. You, you even probably showed it uh, on Africa. Even Africa has this type of, you know. Yes. Similar the, shape, the shapes of countries are based on the shapes of the spaces between the branches of a lightning bolt. And almost everything on the planet is, is shaped that way. The railroad tracks, the roads, uh, all kinds of... Uh, all kinds of things. Now, when the fulgurite, like a lightning fulgurite is created, the, the, the discharge travels along the ground and uh, creates the fulgurite, but it's underneath the ground. Here in this picture, this guy, you know, is digging this thing out. And uh, now the ancient miners, they, uh, uh, instead of uh, creating a, a lightning bolt fulgurite, which is basically just a, uh, 
uh, fused rocks and sand, depending on what you know what what kind of soil the lightning bolt hits. But the ancient miners, instead of that being a a, a rocky a fulgurite, it would be metal, uh, silver, copper, and uh, uh, metals like that. And the door on this on these metals would be the minerals. The minerals would be attached to them and all around them. And uh, in this process of uh, electric mining, um, which probably I should have covered first before we get got into caves, um, it, it, uh, uh, the uh, well, what they do is they uh, there's an electron accelerator in the dome. It shoots down electrons. Uh, uh, and to the ground, and now the ground of the earth, and we'll get into this in a minute, is a prepared layers of material. And uh, and this uh, electron accelerator ch uh, jacks up the voltage of the ground, of this material, and this, and this charge goes down so far. And once they get it sufficiently charged, then they discharge it, and a lightning bolt will shoot out from the discharge spot and creating a metal, ful metal and mineral fulgurite under the ground shape like lightning. And sometimes this discharge travels into places it's not was not really meant to go. Um, the layers of the original Earth had it was like sets of layers where on the top and the bottom would be like a clay-like material, and in between and sandwiched in between like two uh, layers of this clay-like material would be the material that they would uh, morph into the metals and the minerals. And, but sometimes this discharge would travel into this clay-like material layer, and uh, that's where caves come from. Caves are electricity traveling through this material, uh, and the reason it creates just a hole, a, a tube, is because the material needed to make the metal wasn't there. It traveled into the layer of ground that it wasn't supposed to, and it just basically created a fulgurite. And that is why caves are basically fulgurites. Uh, be a, basically a fulgurite that no one dug out of the ground. Uh, so, so that means uh, that that explains this selectiveness into you know finding the path, right? Right. I mean, if if there is some metal solution in in that clay material, then probably it creates the the metal fulgurite. If there is none, it could create a cave am i right yeah yeah if it's if the discharge if the lightning bolt let's say it travels down a little bit too far and it and it goes into the uh, layer that's the containment layer think about the material needed to make the metal is like a sam is like the meat of a sandwich and the bread on the top and the bottom clay like material is the containment layer that contains the the, the zone where the where the metal is made and the layers of clay are just there to keep it all together. But sometimes the discharge travels into this clay layer and it creates a fulgurite because there's nothing there to morph. Because all it is is, is basically like, you know, ground. Yeah, and, and I've seen you also have been talking about stalactites and stalagmites. At that probably is the shape that could be, you know, probably created by these electric discharge as well, you yeah, stalag, stalagmites and stalactites, um, those are um, uh, electrical features that are created uh, when the discharge is going through that material. Yeah, it's and it looks glazy probably due to maybe some heat impulse, right? Well, sort of glazy. A lot of it's very glazy, no doubt about it. Uh, it's got a, a lot of different looks to it. Because the, the glaze is the 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 symptom of something being heated and melted at very fast rate, I would say. Yeah. Like glass is melted via sand, and you you find this you know glaze and polished uh, you know thing that yeah. wasn't was a sand before. For yeah. Example. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. There's no doubt about that. Okay. Uh, when you look at the maps of caves, what you'll see is that caves are, are, are shaped like lightning bolts. Like here on the left is a, uh, the Mammoth uh, Cave system in Kentucky, in the, US, in the US, and it looks almost perfectly like that lightning bolt on the right. 
because that cave was formed by electrical discharge. And the electrical discharge is in the shape of lightning. And, and uh, this, is, this is actually the same one again. It's just a different map. I put that together so you could better see uh, how close they look to each other. Yep, we got it. Uh, that's another one. There's just some other cave, and I haven't done any work on this one yet, but if you look at where the channels go, you can see that is the shape of lightning. And the spaces in the, in the middle, those are the, the empty spaces I talk about a lot, and, uh, and that's where you would have solid ground because the, light, because the, the electrical discharge did not go through there. Um, this is a, a cave in the Philippines, and to me, it looks exactly like that fulgurite. To my eyes, it's, it's exactly the same. And the reason you can walk into these caves is because uh, uh, many fulgurites are hollow. They, they're hollow on the inside, and that's why you can walk into a cave. Uh, this is uh, another uh, the Great Onyx Cave in Kentucky, and those are three lightning fulgurites. And you can see they kind of have a similar uh, a similar shape, and, and it's more than just the overall shape that's similar. It's the contours of the boundaries of the of the fulgurite match the contours and the boundaries uh, of the cave. Yeah, this one is perfect, I would say. Yeah. What it basically is, is that is a giant fulgurite under the ground that no one dug out or could possibly dig out. <laughs> now, I think what this cave shows you is that is the size of the metal that they mined. The inside area there is how big the, the metal fulgurites were that the miners dug out. They were gigantic. They were miles long. They were city blocks wide. Basically, when you go inside of a cave, you're walking inside of a fulgurite. Now here I... Uh, this is uh, some comparison photos of uh, caves versus laser ablation. Uh, basically, laser ablation is where you take material and you, uh, and you point a laser at it and ablate the material. And uh, laser ablation creates certain shapes and certain formations and uh, has a certain look. And if you compare it, you'll see that uh, they look pretty similar. Like the cave there on the top, that's basically electrical scarring that's going on. That when the, uh, the electricity is flowing through there, it's sculpting that material. And what you got to keep in mind here is when the electricity was flowing through there, that material that you see there now was not rock yet. It was a clay-like substance. It wasn't hard rock. Yeah, science call it fluidoids. Something that's coming from underground, the high pressure and flows of creates certain shapes after it's, you know, the pressure pushes it up. But yeah, it's called fluidoid or clay solution type of mixture. Yeah, I can't say for sure what it was. I just know it was some sort of clay-like, something that's not hard, stuff that's not hard like rock. There's another one and another one. <laughs> and maybe one or two more. Uh, uh, the picture on the bottom, that's a lightning fulgurite. Yeah, the glaze I was talking about. Yeah, there you go. Um, By the way, what keeps the those caves safe and not collapsing them is probably that f some form of glazing, but, you know, 
it can be evaporated and weathered or whatever you know water well, is coming everywhere so it's soaking and destroying the glaze but it keeps it like a cement uh i mean the form yeah, it's, is it's yeah, enormous it's, so. it's definitely hard reinforces it i would say well regarding the whole glaze thing um uh, like when that cave was formed and electricity was flowing into that that material wasn't rock yet yeah of course of course so it of course. does so it doesn't get the glaziness that you would get where lightning goes through a, a hard rock hard rocks when you melt them they get glassy this cave was not rock when the lightning when the when the electricity went through it so it doesn't have near the glaziness that you see on lightning strikes because that is original earth that that electricity traveled through. Lightning does not strike original earth. Lightning strikes post mining earth, which is hardened rock for, for most things anyway, right? Because uh, you got soil and stuff, right? But that's kind of, I think, where more of the glaziness comes from. A lot of things, uh, is there's a difference there. Yeah, I think it's, it's it depends on 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 how long that uh, mud solution or clay solution was around. If it gets petrified over time, why not? It be hard, and then it got struck and you know becomes such a granite or I don't know type of glaze like you have on basalt, and you you've been shown basalt by the way. Oh yeah, well I actually have a basalt piece coming up here in a minute or two. Uh, here's another one of those those holes, and that's the same same kind of idea. I think what that hole shows you is that you know when you see lightning in the sky at night, uh, you're kind of just seeing it seeing it in two D. You're not really seeing it in three D, right? Because you can't really see you know how thick is that lightning bolt when you see it in the sky? What shape is it? Is it perfectly round? Is it a perfectly round bolt, or is there some shapes to it? And what these cave openings show you is the shapes of, of the bolt itself. Yeah, it, it, does, it doesn't have perfect shape. So. No, the, the, the shape of the bolt is also the shapes of the spaces between the branches of the lightning bolt. I could take cave, and I didn't put any of those comparisons together for this presentation today but i can show you cave entrances that look exactly like the shape of boulders that look exactly like the shape of lakes that look exactly like the shape of all kinds of things because the sh the shape of lightning is is this kind of the same in all directions but it's not just one shape it's a bunch of shapes but there's a certain uh, uh pattern pattern to them um this here on top is uh is a cave in the grand canyon and uh, uh the one on the bottom is a hydraulic mining site in spain it's alleged that the uh, that the romans engaged in hydraulic mining and these are the remnants of of their hydraulic mining and i don't think that's actually true i think it it is the work of the ancient miners because there, there's no way the romans could could mine that kind of stuff like that no way yeah you have to have pressure there yeah there was no place for water to come from there <laughs> either we don't know something about ancient romans and they were not what we used to be told well my thought on the romans is they never existed that's that's kind of my thought on things that's another comparison from the same same place yeah um these rocks here like both of the rocks there, these, these, uh, th those are electric rocks. Those are rocks that started out as a clay-like material, um, and they hardened in the process. As the, as the metal was, was being made and flowing around that piece of rock, uh, that rock, that material hardened into rock. Uh, the, the holes that you see were created by electricity flowing through there and that's where the metal fulgurite went through a metal fulgurite went right through those passageways and then they yeah. pulled and they pulled them out 
By the way, those who, who wonder where, where all this mud comes from in the cities of 19th century, take a look at the at the pictures of hydraulic mining, how they were mining and how much mud it created. Yeah, in, uh, most people don't know this, but in the gold rush in the United States in the, uh, the latter 1800s, um, it started out with, you know, people picking up gold off the ground and then they got into hydraulic mining and uh and, mo and then after a while most of it was hydraulic mining where they used hoses to break up the ground and and then they would uh set up sluice boxes where they would have the rocky slushy uh, uh material running through and then they would filter out the uh, the rocks to find the to find the gold yeah. and by doing this they used a lot of water and what happened was this water had a lot of sediment in it, right? And this sed yeah. se sediment built up over time, and they put it in dams in different places to try to, to keep it in spots. And then over time, these dams broke, and all this silt started to build up, and it caused massive flooding downstream of where they were doing the hydraulic mining. The reason, yeah. for, the reason for the mud flood was that the ancient miners mined the whole earth imagine if you mined the whole earth you would have flooding everywhere yep it's yeah. a it's a, either a mud spilled from drilling or hydraulic mining waste or dredging waste whatever you want to call it it's still a mining byproduct guys absolutely and i think it was worse then because when they were mining toward the end of the mining when they got down to the to 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 where they're mining the ground level, the present day ground level, because uh, they mine downward in layers. It took them a long time to get down to where we are today. And, uh, um, oh crap, now I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, when, 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 they, when they, toward the ending, end of the mining, they needed to build soil for the earth, right? So what, what they did is they used mining ways to create rock wool. And rock wool is a material that uh, yeah. uh, plant growers use to grow plants indoors and stuff. It's a, actually they use mining ways to make fake soil. And what the miners did was they, they put this mining waste, rock wool, on the ground all over and created earth's first soil. And when it, when it first started to rain, when the water cycle began, um, because in the beginning there was no rain because there was no water cycle because the oceans weren't full of water yet. It was a hydraulic mining water that filled up the oceans yeah. and the more water there was, the more the water cycle began and then the more rain they would start to get. So when they had the earth's first soil uh, set up and they got the first round of trees going and blah, 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 and then you start getting this flooding, what you would get would be a flooding going on in areas with not well-established soil yet. And, and you get more erosion in places where you do not have a well-established uh, root system of plants that, that, that keep the soil in place. So the flooding was really bad uh, at the end of the mining. And that's why so many places around the world are flooded with mud. And I don't think it's every place, but a lot of places, most, maybe yeah, exactly. even most, uh, had mud that eventually flowed because of all this hydraulic mining that was going on. Yeah, it's just uh, just imagine the scale of previous mining, and you will see that we're just experiencing the the post effect of that mining. Absolutely. Uh, here, this this picture here, uh, Philip is uh, uh, some kind of cave like structure or opening in the Faroe Islands. And uh, like I said earlier, the shape of the openings into these kinds of places, they have the shape, the shape of electrical discharge. And you can take cave openings and you, you can match them up to rocks, the mountains. And uh, this is just what I threw together. And uh, you can see it's pretty close to the shape of Mount Everest. Now, Mount Everest was actually born under the ground. The tip of Mount Everest is the minimum height of the original uh, ground level of the Earth before they started. So it's po it's possible that the tip of Mount Everest is is where it all began, 
And there would have been a metal fulgurite that, that went around that mountain in between all the different peaks. And uh, when that dis when the electrical discharge happens, the shape of the of the clay material that becomes the rocks forms these shapes that look that are electrical that you can see in all kinds of different things. And and again, it's not just the shape, it's also the contours of the boundaries of these shapes. And you'll see they look so similar. All right, now we're going to kind of get into caves now a little bit more here. You know, the official story for caves is that basically uh, rainwater seeps into passageways and and drips and the stalactites, stalactites and stalagmites are are the minerals that build up from the dripping water, right? Um, this is a geode. This is an amethyst geode. It's actually, I think, pretty big. Uh, it's not like a tiny little thing. Um, it has what looks like stalactites and stalagmites and a column or two, right? Yep. Now, I don't know how anyone could argue that water dripped inside of this rock and made a cave inside of this rock. What this rock is, is this rock is an electric rock. This rock was made during the electrical discharge where the metal and mineral fulgurite was made. This rock has minerals in it, and this rock would have been a little farther away from where the metal was created. And it got some of the good stuff in it, the stuff that they needed to make metals. So, and since it was electrically created, electricity creates certain structures and features. And, and one of them is this, these stalactite looking like things. Now, again, in that red circle I, I put down there on the bottom, there's that little tab feature again that you see. Yeah, almost, yeah, yeah. Almost everything. Now the shape, the overall shape of this uh, of this uh, geode is also the shape of the space between the branches of a lightning bolt. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, the same pattern. Again. Yeah. Now, I, I overall I call the whole thing I call it the shape, but the shape is not one shape. The shape is an infinite number of shapes. Uh, which have certain contours, like, for example, the tab I circle in red all the time. But these shapes, and they're, like I said, there's an infinite number of them, but they have a certain look to them, like, like crossword puzzle pieces. No two are the same, but they all look the same. Uh, these shapes can be found in lightning. If you look at enough photos of lightning, I could show you one that matches this one exactly. Yeah, and, that, there's a little question before we continue. Um, where did all these minerals go? What is your take? Well, they used them. They took them to, uh, well, some, well, some of it was used on Earth, right? Because we have the buildings that they made, the structures that they made, the railroads that they made, and, and things like that. Uh, most of it, I would assume, went off Earth. Uh, to build the next earth yeah my my question uh, my, my answer to this question is probably as always uh, look what we do today when we go to some place where you know indigenous people live they don't even know what we're doing we are mining drilling doing whatever we want to do take all this stuff to our land giving them only I don't know some money which is not worth anything actually so Probably took it somewhere, maybe sold it. Well, my oh. thought, my thought about the whole like uh, system is is uh, in order to have places to live in this universe or whatever you want to call it. The basically the universe is water. It's not space. It's water. We live in water. Uh, we're looks in a, like it. Looks we're, like we're, it. In, we're in a ball. We're a flat plane across the middle. And there's water around us. And in order to have places to live, you got to build earths. Yeah, and some type of closed system, right? Yeah, you got to build earths. And right now, they're they're building and mining the next earth. And the iron that they made uh, on earth, uh, some of it was used here. Some of it, I'm sure, is used to build whatever structures they have on the other side of the ice wall. Because I'm sure there's probably people there. 
and but the most of it went to build the next earth uh, uh earth earths and, or maybe you know, to use it as resources to create some materials mechanics technologies to go further expand further collect and more resources on other places right yeah 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 now here on the right you got a cave i don't know where that is sometimes when you find pictures they they're not always labeled so i don't haven't figured out where that one is yet but to my eyes it's pretty much the same thing yeah it doesn't contradict the soaking of something if that is some water you know drop by drop creates some new shape because that water also contains some dissolved minerals from yeah. from from the ceiling so it doesn't contradict what mike say actually i think what you what you have with caves is some caves are wet and some caves are dry just like in the water system in your house like all those you know pipes get all this uh coasting i would say right when you use very long for a long time you have all this rust and yeah, all this deposit yeah yeah, so. yeah yeah but see what i think you have here is is these uh those those long skinny things hanging down are called soda straws and the uh, the big thing in the middle is called a column and uh those are created that way those have always been there i don't see any dripping water in there now after these caves were created and the water cycles going on and it's raining and years go by you're going to have water that will then leak into this cave that yeah, is where exactly, you, exactly, that, exactly. that is where your dripping water comes in let's say what, water, water, water finds water. its way everywhere it yeah. finds it in foundations it finds it in metro stations everywhere it yeah. soaks everywhere so it's like yeah no so one can stop so, so the dripping water that you see in caves is actually just nothing more than than rain water dripping into the cave that was already there a lot of these caves there's no water in them at all but you see these structures uh well one other thing uh although i haven't really put too much together on this particular topic here but if you were to take the the stalactites the ones on top and follow them straight down to the ground and a lot of them you don't see nothing down there there's nothing there how could dripping water drip down 10 feet long creating a soda straw or a stalactite and not have any build up on the floor below it yeah sometimes it's uh i i've seen that wetness in some caves but you know uh, exactly that that's contradict your version your theory works a lot better than just a fish i think so because they don't line up right and then when you really start to look deep into it you'll see that the 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 shapes of these uh stalactites and things they're ridiculous there's no way dripping water could ever form uh the things that they uh that they say yeah this looks exactly like uh, uh i've been showing this very fort where bricks were melting due to huge fire and they had this you know the same shape that yeah. was hanging from the ceiling so it's it's some solid clay which is you know heated instantly heated i would say and it creates the huge temperature yeah it was definitely hot and uh before i forget let me uh uh, you know, a lot of the uh, 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 carved out structures that are above the earth, that, you know, like a big uh, rock formation comes out of the ground and somebody caved windows and a, and a door in it, right? That, that kind of stuff. The, way, the reason they were able to do that is because when electric rocks are created, they're not hard yet. They, uh, they're, 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 they, they started out, I don't know if molten is the right term because I don't, quite think molten is the right term but they were they they weren't hard yet they only hardened as they cooled and during the time period during the time period that they were cooling you could then go in there and cut out doors and windows and make steps and drill holes and cut yeah, lines yeah. and that's how they did it they didn't go in there and drill out hard rock i, I know rock. i know what you're talking about you're talking about structures like petra and all this stuff yes right? exactly exactly they went in there before it fully hardened and they 
it's it's not it's not the other way there's like some people saying it was a building before and then it got melted and that's yes. what we see right now no a absolutely it was, it was first created as some rock and before it got you know petrified completely they used it and created those spaces inside absolutely Now, one interesting thing about stalact stalagmites and stalactites and stalagmites is some of them are hollow. How about that? Just like lightning fulgurites. Some of them are solid and some of them are hollow. And here is a place in Spain, a cave in Spain, where there's some hollow fulgurites. Just like cholesterol decay we have in our, you know, blood system. Looks like exactly. Oh, uh, does it? Yeah. Uh, here, here's one of those hollow stalagmites compared to a, a lightning fulgurite. Uh, there's another one. Um, they're just basically hollow tubes. Now, if someone can please explain to me how dripping water can create a hollow tube, All right? Dripping water couldn't make a hollow tube. So these hollow stalactites are... Uh, or stalagmites are, are are electrical features. As the cave was, as the the space that become the cave was being formed, the the uh, the stalagmites and stuff were were just electrical features that they that were formed as as the electricity was flowing through there. Now, if you think about dripping uh, dripping water with minerals in it, how does it suddenly say, all right, boys, let's steer to the left and let's shoot out there and then go up a little bit and then start going down again? It would never work like that. Those are clearly electrical features, just like you see in a lightning fulgurite. Yeah, and look at the uh, you know glaze again on the stalactite. Yeah. When I'm saying glaze, I'm saying little Polish, you know, fragments. Yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean. I, I, I understand. And uh, that's exactly what you get if you get a rock hit it or something, you know, because clay becomes rock very fast at this heat, huge temperatures. Yeah. And the one on the right there is fulgurite that I've outlined. But, uh, yeah, guys, isn't isn't this repeatable evidence, guys? This shape is everywhere. Mike showing everywhere. the shape since day one. Yeah, it's it's, it's in everything. Um, this is a, a, a stalagmite, and the, the bottom one is a is the lightning fulgurite that hit a tree. Um, looks kind of crazy, right? Well, we don't know actually what was the cause of those discharges, but you know, lightning that does work, I think, very well for that. Well, for, for as example, example, example of lightning is very fine, of how it could look. Yeah, uh, this is just another kind of, uh, of, of a formation in a cave, which looks very, um, very electrical, very uh, fulgurite-like. Uh, I think the fulgurites in this picture. Uh, uh, are artificial. People take material and uh, take electricity and, uh, and create fulgurites. And I, I think I, uh, the bottom's being blocked. I can't see that. There is a little uh, comment. Uh, looks like petrified blood vessels or nerve ending. Well, we are electrical creatures, by, by the way. So we all have electric field. So no wonder our blood system looks exactly like lightning. So I don't know. No what doubt do you about take? it. No doubt about it. Uh, I don't think any of this stuff is petrified giants or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, the, the body electric, if you were to, I, I've actually done a number of posts about the electrical looking features in the human body, the brain, the, the heart and different stuff. And, and uh, everything that's alive is, is, is alive electrically. And uh, uh, life is slow motion electrical discharge. And the uh, things that you see in the bodies of creatures and the bodies of plants and the bodies of trees also share these electrical shapes. If, if 
features and nuances and contours. Yeah, what is that met metaphorical spark of life? That is the electricity, actually, the, the, the electric field that we have inside of this place, right? It's, it's, it's a torsion energy that is everywhere, and we know that it can be measured, it can be, you know, easily found. Yeah, we definitely live in an electrical, uh, uh, I wouldn't say natural world because it's artificial, but we live in an electrical uh, world. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, no doubt about it. Uh, this in here is a, this is a cross section. So the picture on the left, even though that top little round thing looks like it's setting on top of the other one, it's not. It's not sticking up out of that one. It's a straight cut across the, across there. Uh, and you have to ask yourself, how could dripping water slowly dripping over time onto the ground creating that thing? How could it create that 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 look on the inside? There's no way it could. Um, and it just happens to look like uh, the patterns that you get on uh, on metal in places where rust starts to happen, and there's an electrical influence on that piece of metal. And, mm. if you, and if you look at that piece of metal, you see that the uh, uh, that those round shapes are overlapping each other, just like yeah. just like the, uh, the stalactite there. It looks also like uh, when you have it, something like a window is freezing, and these ice particles also appear on on the windows. If you look closely, yeah, they look yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. Or Absolutely. if you breathe breathe on a cold window like this you also have this you know stuff yeah uh, this is another uh, by the way water perfect. shape water water particle shape is very uh, I mean it's very um, I would say not similar but uh, it, it's 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 a it's good proportional and geometrical form always an electrical form looks different it's always random but it has certain patterns as what you're saying certain patterns you can figure out and you know find this coincidental evidence everywhere you look whereas yeah. nature it's it's what we call natural actually because it doesn't have an organized uh you know organized form now water is uh there's a lot of secrets to water water is a very mysterious thing um, it's, it's quite unique it's uh Water plays a huge role in all of this. Um, I'm talking about snowflakes. Snowflakes. Oh, snowflakes. Have, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Snowflakes. Oh, man, they're amazing. They have just amazing uh, shapes. And they all, always have this, you know, uh, shape of geometrical, yes. you know, yes, very, exactly. very interesting shape. Yeah. And that, and that, those shapes of uh, that you see in uh, the snowflakes, that's where crystals come from. That's how, that's why I think they're. Well, for other reasons why too, but that's why I think there was water involved in the layer that where the metal and the minerals were made. There was also water in there, salt water, probably conducting this discharge yeah. through and the I ground. Think, and the shapes that you see in crystals is kind of like why you see the shapes in snowflakes, because because water likes certain forms, and I think that's where where all of that comes from. Uh, this is, a, a, again, another cross-section of a, a stalagmite or a stalactite or, or something. And uh, the bottom picture, for what it's worth, is the Eye of Africa. So I forget how many miles wide that thing is. It's uh, very big. And coincidentally, it just sort of looks pretty similar. Yeah, very good one, I guess. Yeah. Because the eye of Africa was created electrically. That's an electrical discharge that happened. Maybe and that's a discharge that created the whole continent. Uh, well. Because it's a pretty big one. Well, if you think about the continent of Africa, there it is the shape of a space in between a lightning bolt. And there, there would have been a lightning a metal folder right that wrapped around the the contours of Africa. And there would have been lightning bolts that wrapped around the contours of each of the countries in there, except for some countries do have artificial lines in them. Because uh, some lightning bolts, the spaces between the lightning bolts, so some of them are open at one end, they're not closed. So in a lot of those kind of places, you get artificial lines. And then, oh, okay. for, 
And then for other reasons, uh, maybe political and otherwise, you might get some artificial boundaries. But for the most part, most of the boundaries of countries and, and things are, are the shapes of the spaces of the lightning bolt. And again, that's, well, go ahead. Um, it's funny that you bring this picture of the eye of Africa. There is a notion that this was an alien base. No, guys, there was never alien base there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, there's our electrical box again. And just kind of the, it's, it's an electrical situation is what it is. I like that one. It's in there. Yeah. Uh, these things here, those are... Uh, uh, by, by the way, you, you see the, yeah, you see this shape also in some in certain minerals have this shape like Abs absolutely. You see it. You see it in all kinds of things. Uh, uh, the bottom pick. Uh, these are supposed to be fossilized bacteria, fossilized ancient bacteria called stromatolites. But what they really are, they're not bacteria. They're electrical formations in that rock. And if I could had a picture of the whole rock there, and I don't know if I do, I don't think I do actually. But that rock has the shape of the space inside of a lightning bolt. And since we're talking about rocks a little bit, because some of you will probably say, well, not every rock is the shape of the space between the uh, branches of a lightning bolt. They're, they're kind of like two kinds of rocks, sort of, in, in a way, one way of looking at it. There are rocks that are formed in place where when the electrical discharge is happening, that rock is just still still there. There are rocks being created above it, below it, around it, but that rock kind of just sits there through the whole process. And then there are rocks that jump into the air, that when the, the electricity is discharging through the area where it's being made, it'll pop up into an open cavity. Because remember, it's creating a cave around this fulbright. Around this fulbright is is open space and there'll be a cave that's formed around the fulgurite and a lot of these rocks when they're formed they will jump up into the open space and those are the round rocks those are the blobby looking rocks okay so some, some rocks are round and blobby they're not shaped like the space uh within a lightning bolt And again, those are more of those fossilized bacteria, stomatolites. And they're basically just electric rocks that have, uh, and there's another one. And again, this rock, I, if I spend enough time looking for one, I can find you a lightning bolt where this has that exact same shape between the branches. Um, this picture right. here is the fried egg, as they call it, a fried egg formation in a cave in yeah. Virginia and there's our, our lightning fulgurite on a tree. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to say when you were saying molten. I wouldn't say fried. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a glossiness to some of these things. Um, <clears throat> what do they call these things? Uh, helectite. I think that these are called helectites. Uh, this is a formation inside of a cave. Uh, they don't like to talk about these kind of things. They always want you thinking about stalactites and stalagmites because how do you explain that? Yeah, it doesn't support uh, the theory of gravitation also. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Uh, the picture on the right, I haven't labeled some of these yet. Uh, the picture on the right is native silver. You were also showing a uh, good video about um, uh, nuggets in, in your group. Yeah. I'll show you. Nug some. Nuggets are not native form, right? Yeah, or no, they are? No, no, the gold nuggets are native gold. Native form. Okay. Yeah. Native gold, native, uh, most people don't even know that there's such thing as the word native in front of gold or silver or copper. Uh, native copper, native silver, native gold is, 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 is real pieces of sort of solid copper, gold, or, or, or silver, whatever it is. Uh, the reason they call it native copper or native gold is because it was born here. It was made here. It was made in the ground here. That's why it's called native metals. Uh, this, this piece of silver here is, is a piece of native silver. Now, the silver that the miners mined, they were big pieces of 
of native silver. As a matter of fact, that piece in the cave right there would be an example of one of the sizes of uh, of that uh, of what the the native silver that they mined. And there was probably pieces even way, 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 way bigger than that. This little piece of native silver is probably only a couple inches or so, or a few inches maybe. But the point is here is that electri electrical discharge ha creates certain shapes and certain formations. And these certain shapes and certain formations uh, cross the boundaries of material where totally different materials can all, all have this same shape. And the reason they have the same shape is because it's electrical. There's nothing else can explain it. There's no way dripping water can explain these formations here, which just happen to look like lightning bolts. <laughs> Uh, here's your your uh, your glossy thing again. Yeah. Yeah. That's con, a, con, con, we call it concrement in medicine. This is how uh, the kidney stones look like sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Kidney stones they look very electrical. They look like electric rocks. Some kidney um, stones have this, you know, uh, sharp edges like uh, COVID nineteen. <laughs> yes. Some have this uh, glaze type of thing. Absolutely, I have a good picture of a lot of those, and 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 they're quite like disturbing. Actually, you think about it, like wow, that's in my body. That's gotta hurt. Yeah. So, uh, in the bottom picture, uh, for people that are familiar with the Travant stones, uh, the Travant stones, uh, I forget where those are at. Uh, look just like those things, where you got balls glued onto balls. And, <laughs> And, and, and this would be an example of how, like I, I said a little bit ago, some rocks are round and some are blobby. And if you look at the bottom picture, which is caused by uh, a power line arcing onto the ground, like in a thunderstorm where a live wire hits the ground, electrical discharge just charges into the ground and it creates these kind of things. And in this discharge, those balls were created. That ball is not a melted ball that was already there. That ball was made when that material was was melting uh, with the electricity flowing through it, 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 it made those balls and it made those blobs. So when the, a lot of the, uh, the like the, uh, the giant stone balls that you see all over the different places in the world, that's what those things are. And some of them, uh, when they shoot out and are made, they, 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 just, they could be stuck to each other, stuck to things or be individualized. Miners use these small, uh, you know, balls and different shapes of different sizes balls in in the green greened mills uh, when they, you know, take all this stuff inside and grind it, and the powder comes out, and you easily extract metals that are left in that powder because we mine actually not as Mike says native metals. We mine the waste. So yes, absolutely. Uh, and that's why we're here. They brought us here to mine their waste piles because in waste piles, there's a little bit of, uh, uh, of metals in those. I, I think it's like less than 1%, like about 0.7 or something percent of, co of copper ore, for example, has copper in it. Yeah. And By the way, there is a concept of uh, the movie uh, Matt Damon was uh, casted there. Uh, movie when they you know created smaller people and smaller world because they don't have enough resources and so you have to you know pay to get into this smaller world which was you know perfect they had enough resources there everything was fine there and that makes me think this idea that they create smaller mining you know units to mine over and over again to make it 100 percent efficient and what do you think about it yeah, well, we, we they, they do that in modern times. They uh, mine mine waste piles, even like in the gold rush shows on television, they're doing that. So, yeah. Just an idea, just a speculation, guys. Um, I like how the bottom here uh, almost looks like volcanoes, don't they? Yeah, little crater openings. Yeah, on the top, don't they? And it makes you wonder because in a little bit here, I'm going to start comparing these things to stuff on top of the ground. Makes you wonder how many volcanoes might be one of those. I've always said that volcanoes are slag heaps. 
and makes me now wonder well i wonder if some of them are these features uh these are these are called cave rafts i guess uh look like pretzels but they're shaped just like fulgurites look exactly like a fulgurite exactly like a fulgurite yeah i wonder the word rafting comes from i don't know you raft river on on some raft you know yeah <laughs> oh it, oh i know i know why they're probably called river rafts because if you think about the the thing going around it's like a rubber raft you got that fat donut thing that goes around yourself all right that's probably where that comes from <clears throat> and i like to stretch everything as far as i can seems to me that the sky is electric clouds are electric thunderstorms are electric so do electric skies have any similarity to electric caves well i say they do i say that the same kind of electrical force that created these uh, popcorn formations and caves is also the same kind of electrical process that forms these clouds and balls yeah if lightning is <coughs> concentrated concentrated energy source yeah that then the field around it also creates some forms and shapes yeah which yeah i think so philip all right or i'm crazy <laughs> no you're not but, crazy uh, but i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure those are electrical and i have a lot of other stuff on clouds too that i'm not going to show here but there, there definitely is an electrical uh uh, nature to clouds clouds uh, is a very you know speculative form uh you can always find this pareidolia type of shapes on the clouds like animals and yep. you know, faces <laughs> but in certain in certain cases when you have lightning and the shape that you just showed it probably is okay it's not like direct evidence but some type of coincidence of course yeah and you've been showing in your group uh the video somebody posted a video with this rock type of clouds oh yeah 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 very yeah, yeah. interesting that is awesome yeah that's that's amazing let, uh, let me see if i can find it fast so people can see, uh, let's see. i saw skies like that a couple times there was one day uh, uh the, the, the whole sky looked like that uh, like all above you and to the horizon uh it was look completely like that the contrast of the of the of the dark and light colored clouds was amazing it's, it was frozen yeah, i found it let's see yeah. by the way that's uh ancient minor earth group and as you can see that's that's how it looks uh, restart Clouds exactly like rocks, guys. <laughs> yeah, pretty amazing. Okay, coming back to you, Mike. Okay. Uh, now, this bottom pic picture here is uh, where, where lightning hit the ground. Uh, I forget what that is. It might be a sidewalk or asphalt or something. Uh, but the, the material that you see on top there, all that greenish and bluish kind of stuff, that is material that that was that would that come out of there, uh, kind of exploded out of there, if you will. Uh, Spit, spits out like erupted. Yeah, yeah. Those are where your balls come from. That's where you, that's your cave popcorn. That's that's how uh, electricity melts things. It, it, it morphs things. It makes it get soft and hot, and then it quickly cools down again. And forms into these blobs and that's why i say you know like some rocks are round and blobby like because those are the ones that shoot to, shoot through the air and things yeah, um, and, and it creates creates this cavity in and this you know I, I would say it's a it's a form of of that field probably yeah uh this is a a, a lightning fulgurite on the bottom electricity likes to make balls sometimes it makes perfect balls sometimes it makes blobs sometimes it makes the shape 
maybe maybe if these things had enough electricity flowing through them for long enough they they would have formed into a better ball or into the shape i'm not totally sure but all yeah. we know is that there's little little comments looks like exodized copper yeah like uh when you have this you know monuments and you have this uh bronze in it bronze is copper uh, you know metal yeah. so it has yeah. this we call it patina so it's like something that appears on old monuments looking oh, like this green green oh green. patina patina yeah yeah that's how we say it here patina uh uh, cave popcorn versus laser ablation. Uh, laser ablation is not exactly electrical discharge, but and it's a deep topic. What is the differences between a laser and a lightning bolt? I don't know. I don't pretend to know. It's, that's pretty deep. But, laser laser uses some uh, mineral though, right? It it uses electricity as a power to turn the device on. Oh, and it uses it some power. certain min mineral or rubin or something like this. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's different ways they do it. So it's kind of complicated. <laughs> I haven't gotten too deep into the physics of all this stuff yet. Cause this yeah, is we, we need to find good. a guy who knows laser. Yeah, yeah. we need a, a resident expert in some of this, this kind of stuff. But nonetheless, the similarities are there, at least in my Who, who by the way, uses laser ablation? Universe, universities, scientists. So it's like uh, scientific manufacturers. Oh. Yeah, manufacturers that are trying to make things, that kind of stuff. Uh, I like this one. This is a cave in a rock. So they kind of crack the side of it and see so yeah. what was inside, right? Yeah, so it was like a geode. It's basically a geode. And this geode, after they broke it open, it has this cave formation in it. Uh, and it just happens to look e emerald cool. copper type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, could be a bit of could have been around copper. Uh, I don't know if that's malachite on the outside. It could be that's probably that dark green stuff. Probably malachite and that blue stuff. Uh, I don't know what that is. Fluoride or something. I don't know. By the way, the uh, the Emerald City uh, where Goodwin was ruling in your fairy tale about uh, Ellie and her dog who was thrown there in the, in this world in Oklahoma I think or Kansas Kansas and they had Emerald City city was completely built from minerals I, would, I believe oh, I don't know if I've seen that it's a book oh it's you a guys book. yeah oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, Wizard of Oz I believe oh the Wizard of Oz okay oh that Emerald City all right <laughs> Now this place, this is a, this is a mountain structure kind of deal, right? Uh, and uh, if you flip it upside down, it looks like a cave. In the, in the middle picture there, I flipped it upside down. That's that same image. I zoomed in on it, cropped it, and flipped it upside down. And if you look at it closely, you can see it looks just like uh, cave draperies. You can see bats hanging off of that, right? Because this cave, basically, when it was, or this, not cave, when the mountain was made, when those formations come into being, that thing was underground. And there was a fulgurite wrapped around it. And that electric rock that was close to the discharge where the, the material got fried uh, or whatever you want to say got molded and electrically shaped into those shapes um they're basically stalagmites upside down cave draperies <laughs> there's a comment um bubbles are formed naturally around so are rocks it is other forces and content that create different shapes well we we can speculate on that of course but i think well, it's we have this electromagnetic field everywhere right so absolutely maybe those forces that geologists try to list in certain you know in certain scientific researches as like moisture weathering i don't know 
what are those forces actually what they tell us about but this is all contained in the electric system so yeah, why I, don't we just look at the obvious first then go to some secret forces yeah I, I, I it seems to me that when you look at everything electricity electrical discharge explains virtually everything that we see there's no other explanation yeah. that explains everything we see except for electrical discharge because I mean I've pretty much compared every mountain in the world almost to to these things and they're all and they're all the same this is just another different comparison of that same mountain to uh, uh, to, to cave draperies I think they call them cave draperies um, these are uh, large you know you can see the little towns in there right so these are these are big mountain structures uh, these are karst formations uh in uh south china and the bottom one there is uh is a cave also a karst formation yeah so, so what is that so what that formation in china really is is a giant version of that cave floor there's a bunch of those karst cave formations everywhere yeah and in every country probably has it See this karst, yeah, they're they're everywhere. They're karst. Most caves are karst caves, I believe. And then you got karst mountains and karst, uh, you know, landscapes. And these are, like I said, there's like uh, the the earth was made in layers, and there's layers of material that turned into the different. Like karst is like what is the protective bear, bear uh, layer. And when the zapping goes on, some of it gets chewed up. And, and formed electrically and that's what you're seeing in both of these uh pictures here um this is a, a place uh why is that popping up get out of there uh, uh this is white pocket and uh, uh i i the, the the video programs cover in the bottom of my screen so i can't read the whole thing i forget where it's at arizona or somewhere and just uh, just press hide hide there on on that top hide yeah uh, oh cool okay cool thanks uh yeah this is the white pocket in uh in arizona which is a, a real interesting formation and i would have never thought when i first started doing this i'd ever be able to explain that uh but here we are uh, it's malachite is a is a mineral associated with uh, with copper, and uh, what those are is basically the same kind of thing. Um, electricity, like I've said many times, likes certain shapes and creates certain formations, and doesn't matter what the material is. Some it, it, it some material goes into these kinds of shapes, and some material goes into other kinds of shapes, and but the shapes are, are, are Depend, common. De depending on the content of each of them. I think so the content and maybe other factors which I don't know what they are yet uh, but there's just a certain commonality of, of shape. yeah stuff stuff is different due to for example temperature for example in in some places you get less heat like we were talking about weather in the beginning right places yeah. are different so yeah. the solution and uh, the content of each clay compound is different so yeah that explains it yeah that's just a couple more pictures of the same kind of idea here uh so basically malachite and these rocks here were, were formed electrically all right this is something they call uh cave bacon i guess it looks oh. like bacon. Oh. i, love, I yeah. love bacon you know I can look at even on the one on the top you can see the dripping water right on the bottom on the right you can see the yeah water, yeah yeah water drips as i said it doesn't contradict what you're saying yeah For, first is the form and the, uh, the soaking is everywhere so yeah i think what you have here is that piece of cave bacon was already there and over time you get water that drips in the cave and then drips on top of these structures and does does some amount of mineral in that in that water and do these structures maybe uh, grow a tad probably but they're already there and I would suggest they barely grow at all if they grow at all by the way if that was that solution of that rock wasn't that stable so it would soak and soak and it would be destroyed 
yeah. improves that that that's that is a solid form it can only maybe a little bit change of a shape but sharpen not not edges would be not as sharp as they were and yeah. that's it so it's a solid concrement just like we have in our kidneys yeah you, no, you cannot no, take no, it no. except if you just take it out with the surgery or uh, infrasound uh, breaking or some medications yeah water doesn't dissolve it anymore after this electric discharge yeah uh this is a comparison with an agate and for whatever reason electrical discharge likes to make banding i don't know why but it does and how could an agate which is not allegedly formed by dripping water have the same formations as a cave form same same look as a cave formation it just couldn't unless you apply the electrical idea and that these are electrical yeah so is the sediment theory in geology like they say in layers and like different layers clay uh, rocks clay and so on this doesn't form naturally this no. doesn't you know no and one thing that you know because they they ex use sediment to explain everything right like, oh there's said layers of sediment and layers of sediment on the oceans formed all this yeah. stuff if somebody you gotta ask yourself well where's all this sediment come from <laughs> yeah. i mean come on it's, it's not like raining sediment every day where, where could possibly all the sediment that comes up that makes thousands of feet of sediment yeah. like, come on as long mm -hmm. as they cannot explain something, they they create yeah. some 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 unexplainable theories. Yeah, like it's all, it's always big heat. Boom. It's always heat, pressure, water, sediment, erosion. That's it. That's every explanation for everything in geology. Uh, I like this here. This is a uh, it's a beautiful K formation in uh, uh, the Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. Uh, just stunning. To look through that uh, and it just happens to look exactly like an agate no way dripping water makes those kinds of formation these are all electrical formations just like an agate uh, I love that picture that is so awesome um, yeah that's, that's great that, yeah that lady probably works there because I uh, surely they wouldn't allow you to walk over there uh, that both looks like a agate and uh, those rusty stuff from uh, electric uh, box. Yes, it does. Absolutely. 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 And look at the top of the cave also. Yeah. And you can see like that big stalactite on, or stalactite, yeah, stalactite on the top. Where, where, where do you see it dripping on the bottom anywhere? <laughs> It's a completely yeah. different. It's, yeah, a, it's a completely different color, right? I mean, how that looks like a crystal, right? If there's, you're a geologist, just uh, burn your diploma. After absolutely, this it's, it's all it's all a scam. It's all it's all a lie. And this just a couple more agate uh, comparisons. And again, if I took out my little red marker, I'd put a little red marker there, and I'd put a circle there, and I'd put a circle there, and I'd put a circle there. And each one of these shapes is a space. Yeah, you guys have to subscribe to Mike's Ferreira group, Ancient Minor Earth. Link is in the description. You're going to be watching plenty of this footage, zooming it by yourself, and you'll figure out the shape. Mike yeah. is always pointing it with some red dots, red uh, you know arrows. So it's yeah. pretty easy to to get a good trained eye to see that. In it, t it takes a while to wrap your brain around this. Yeah, you have to look at a lot of pictures before you suddenly say, "All right, now I'm starting to see it." Okay, all right, all right. And after a while, you'll begin to just to, to easily see it and recognize what it is. I like how these things look like the. Uh, the fanciness that you see on uniforms of generals and things. <laughs> almost yeah, yeah. almost kind of like that idea come from this. And uh, and those are basically electrical formations. Yeah, that's where that comes from. That's just stunning. I mean, you 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 you're probably talking about epaulet, uh, this uh, 19th century uniform stuff. Is that, that what it's have. called? Yeah, Apple, real, yeah, real. Yeah, it's 
It looks just like it. By the way, it looks like a wire. It wired. It looks like a wire. Twisted wire. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like wire. Copper wire. Yep, exactly. Gold or copper wire. Uh, this is the formation uh, in the cave in Nevada. Uh, it's called a cave shield. This formation is called a cave shield. And that's laser ablation of silicon um, by laser. And it just kind of has that same kind of look. Same. I wonder what, what's the shape of uh, the compact disc in, in, inside my micro shape. How does it look? You mean a CD? Yeah. What do you mean? How does it look? You because about it, microscopically yeah 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 how does it look after oh, oh, you know, i don't know that's a good question after it gets recorded i don't know i have to look into that uh, i do have a cool picture of her because a, we call it cotton like uh some lasers is cotton inside this compact disc oh oh now i see where you're getting at when they were when they put the recording onto the disc yeah, yeah what exactly. is that actually oh i'm gonna have to look at that i don't know yeah that's interesting. I like that. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar. There's a, a tree called a dragon tree. Or, yep, no, in dra Africa, a, no Africa. wait, wait, wait. A dragon blood tree. A dragon blood tree. Yep. And they look exactly like cave shields. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and that's. that's Tree uh, tree root system is also looking like I. Uh, uh, absolutely. Blood system, like, you know. Lightning bulbs. And yeah. the bottom picture here, that's a laser ablation cr crater that I that I flipped upside down. And uh, electricity, uh, electrical stuff, like certain shapes. Now this here uh, is a rock formation in Mexico that's above the ground. Right? It's above the ground. When that was formed, that mountain was below the ground. It was just like a cave exactly the same thing that formation in mexico was not created by dripping water that formation has been there forever and it hasn't changed a bit except maybe a little bit of erosion um, but it was formed that way and here's another one in mexico it's the same kind of thing if i took that sky and removed it and put black in there and told you that was a cave and removed those trees you'd never notice yeah. These are the same things. The same kind of thing. Uh, this one here, this is. Uh, I know where it is. It's Turkey. Well, there's one like that, exactly like that in Turkey. It starts with a yeah. P, I think. Uh, this is Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, Yellowstone's pretty cool. Everyone should try to go there if they ever if they can. Very cool. Uh, and the bottom picture is uh, they call these rimstone rimstone dams, and that's in a, uh, in a cave. Uh, I forget where that's at. It's a famous cave in Slovakia or something like that. I haven't labeled this one yet, but you can see they're the same kind of thing. Uh, this one here is uh, it's called Fly Geyser in Nevada. And uh, picture on the right is a is a cave, is is a rimstone another rimstone uh, dam in a cave, and you can see that the same basic thing. And and when that and that geyser formation of that was formed, it was formed underground and it was at the bottom of a cave. And it wasn't a cave like the cave that you see on the right. It was a cave that had a fulgurite in it. And that's why it's the the, the walls of the cave are no longer there because they mined it all the way. And that's yeah. just part of the floor that they left because either they wanted to have that thing there or they thought it was super cool. Wouldn't the people love this thing? Let's just leave it. Uh, one of those two. <laughs> yeah, why don't they just, you know, follow the technical task? Sometimes they left this stuff for people just to do agriculture. For yeah, them. like like right here. Uh, this uh, terrace in China that they farm on is a rimstone dam from a cave. And there is a giant metal fulgurite that wrapped around this whole thing. And all that was mined away. 
it's very possible that during this time period when the miners were mining this level that they used these rimstone rimstone dams, dams to grow their own food there too. It's very possible that the miners actually set some of these up to grow their own food. Is of course they would have had to eat. Did they order out off planet for food every day? No. They made these things. They they turned these things into farming terraces to uh, to grow their own food, and they still remain there today. And people just took them over. Why does electrical discharge create these shapes? I don't know. But these shapes are also like if you look at the one on the bottom, well, look at all of them, I guess. But they're all basically the shape of the space in between the branches of lightning. Unfortunately, there are very few photographs of big lightning fulgurites. This is like the only one in the world, this one here. It's in a museum in Indiana, which one day I'm going to go visit and take some pictures of it. Uh, but pulling a fulgurite this size out of the ground with all those branches on it is like a one in a billion chance to find something like this, where you could actually get it out of there without it falling apart. and. and so there's very few large fulgurites that I can even compare these things to. That's about the only one I've ever been able to find. What does this look like to you guys? Philip, is that a cave? Looks like, uh, yeah, the ceiling, ceiling of the cave, something like this. To me, that looks like a cave, but it's not. It's upside night, down. Upside it's down. upside down, and it's a mountain. It's called Salt Mountain, in uh, Hormuz Island, and off the coast of Iran. Uh, each salt, by the way, is a solution of some minerals and water. Yeah. Now, even though they call this Salt Mountain, uh, I, I, it's not like all salt. That's not like just a big chunk of salt. Um, they're, they're, I'm sure there's salt in it, but it's more than just salt that's in there. Because if that was just salt, it would have all gone away by now. So if you kind of compare it to the cave stuff, you'll see it's uh, it's the same kind of thing. I'm not sure how much time has passed, Philip. Are we running out of time? Not really, but you, you can finish it when you want. I see your dog okay. is is angry, right? <laughs> well, she's got some kind of itch problem going on right now. Uh, and every every, uh, every so often, well, she goes on a scratch and itch and agony. Yeah. And I'm gonna have, I might have to take her to the vet on Monday if this doesn't yeah. go away. Um, all right, this is, uh, I don't have all these pictures in a very good order, but this is uh, a place in Madagascar. Uh, obviously, on the left, that's this is sticking up out of the ground, and uh, this on the picture on the right is a, a stalagmite. Yeah, so gra gravity doesn't really explain it. So no, and to my eyes, these things are—I mean—they're exactly the same. The material might be a little bit different, even though I bet you it's pretty close to the same kind of material. But some mountains and rock formations are basically cave formations. I like that one. Now, I used to think in the very beginning that the shapes of these things were, 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 were created by hydraulic mining. The ancient miners were hydraulic miners, and they definitely hydraulic mined. But a lot of these formations were made that way. Like when that formation on the top was created, there was probably an open space around it, and that thing's just sticking up into the open air, and they never even put any water on it. People like to think of mining as sorting through small rocks to get what you to get what you want. The ancient miners didn't sort through small rocks. They picked up giant chunks of metal with cranes and lifted them up out of there and used water to, to, to create a slurry of the, of, the, of the stuff that falls onto the ground to then sort through it 
to get the pieces of gold that fell out. The gold nuggets that people find today are the little pieces that the miners left. Those gold nuggets that are native gold, those are actually tiny little pieces of, of, of fulgurites that were made that were miles long. Just, just small particles. Yes, like, like leaves off a giant tree, like a little leaf off of a giant tree. Uh, oh, yeah, here's our basalt rock here. Uh, uh, this is the basalt rock in uh, on an island off of South Korea. And uh, I, yeah, that, I, that's the difference between melting uh, actually what what we see coming out of so-called volcanoes, right? And what we see that was created by a discharge. So this discharge form is different than just something has been melted and looks like a basalt glazed rock, right? Well, I, I kind of like, I don't really like the word melted so much when it comes to stuff that was original earth. Well, it looks into. it looks like it's melting yeah, in it does look melted. Like la lava is but, very but hot and it looks I kind like of think of these rocks as more like if you're making brownies in the oven. That brownie starts off as a mix of liquidy material. Like right? those bubbles, uh, and, air and, bubbles inside the bread yeah, and, yeah, cheese yeah. and and and, and when that you know when the when the stove is cooking it, nothing's really melting, right? It's forming. It's hard. It's forming. Yeah, it's it's forming. It's, it's, and it's shape. hardening, and it's not really melting. And if I kept that brownie, the brown, pan of brownies in there too long, it's going to get really hard, right? That's kind of more of what rocks are: is a hardening, the electrical. I wouldn't call it electrical hardening, but the electrical discharge through the material takes that clay-like material and, and, and heats it up super hot, and then it cools, and that cooling is the yeah. hardening. It's not yeah. really melting. Yeah, it's like what they do in uh, basalt rocks production. Uh, they, they, they melt all this basalt together in some furnace, yes. and then just not just, you know, cooling it down they cooling it at certain temperatures which affect like the the further abilities of that material yes to be used and and so it to be solid more you know uh, less uh, more durable more flexible more solid and uh, therefore uh, more efficient yeah I saw your video on that that was good and that uh, is not the same because they this is just natural cooling that's yes. why it, it's creating all these bubbles inside and yes. it's not all solid and mixed and you know shiny like what you see in the furnace stuff. And, I, and I would suggest those are not really bubbles those are electrical formations and that and that there wasn't necessarily like a, a dome bubble over the top of those things that that was yeah more I, I, Maybe you didn't he hear me. I was saying like when you cook a, a bread or cookie, all those little stuff is also say say we we can say it's the same shape, right? And it also effect of heating, yes, of, of uh, clay type of structure because uh, the drove is like clay actually. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's hard to it's hard to know the actual physics of how all this stuff works. <laughs> But I believe it's uh, it's it's affected by heat and this hardening solidation yeah. process. Those things would have been hot, super hot when they were made. Super hot. I don't know if they glowed red. I don't think they glowed red uh, or anything like that. I just think they were would have been super hot. And uh, yeah, red is red is like extreme hot, but black is super hot. I would say. Well, I think the color comes from the, just the uh, the makeup of the material that it is. But it's hard to say because, like every mineral, that you name a mineral, I can show you that mineral in ten or twelve or more different colors. So, where, where colors and things come from, it's hard to know. Uh, there's a comment: high energy lightning is going to probably produce a lot of heat. So there you go. Yeah, we are talking about something similar to lightning absolutely just like lightning 
the only real difference is that lightning is is striking not original earth and electrical mining is discharge going through materials that are prepared and set up to make things so it's going to look a little it's going to look it's going to have similar style and structure but it's going to be different material and uh this is bryce canyon national park in utah and uh you can kind of see the similarity of the wall and the cave and the walls of the canyon. Um, in the in the Bryce Canyon photo, a, a metal fulgurite would have went down through that channel. Where those trees are would have been a giant piece of metal running up through there. And that giant piece of metal would have had, uh, if it was copper, would have had malachite on it and different material. Yeah, it just got extracted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this cave is a, flowers. Yeah, these are cave flower formations, whatever those are. Uh, I think a lot of the formation in caves are made out of calcite. Is is what is what you read. A lot of it's calcite. And even though the the materials that these things are made of here are completely different, they look the same because they are formed electrically, and electricity likes to do certain things. And for silver, it likes to spin them in circles like that. And make wire and make rope and and stuff. Uh, electricity does different things to different materials, and these two happen to share share the same kind of structure when they're made. Uh, or perhaps yeah. that's a different because of uh, electricity also has different frequency. This Maybe. is all. This is also very true too. Uh, you know, like when they're charging up the ground before they discharge it, how many volts do you want? You know, the difference, the way you dial up the voltage will probably af affect in some way what you get uh, afterwards, I would imagine. Yeah, we call it calibration. When you calibrate the device, and yeah. use it for certain, you know, you can use it for this or you can use it for that. So you have to calibrate it to to use it a certain way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the one on the right, Devil Slide. Uh, I would have never thought I'd be able to figure out what that was. But <laughs> it also looks like a, a rock, wind rock in, in Utah, something like this. Like yeah, there's, there's, <coughs> there's a few things that look like this. And, uh, and lo and behold, it just happens to match this cave formation in, on the floor. So we know caves are electrical. They're shaped like lightning bolts, and everything else looks electrical. So my guess would be... Electricity form that, whatever that formation you want to call it. it when I put the label on the bottom there, I, I misspelled that. It's not. There's no such thing as a stegamite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not even a stalactite. I don't even know what you call it. There's another name for them. I forget what they are. But, uh, but in my opinion, formed electrically. And yeah, our, our brain works uh, the way that we can uh read the correct way even if it's misspelled <laughs> that's right i've seen memes on that uh, i think this is the last little picture i got in the cave portion uh, uh these are cave pearls they call them cave pearls and uh on the right side there is uh, laser ablation ejecta balls uh when uh, uh, uh lasers create these balls like if you were a lot of this, these 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 things come from where they take a, like say like a piece of, of whatever it is, let's just say gold or something. They have a plate of gold, and they have this plate of gold sitting on something, sitting in some a little pool, a little dish of water, and then they shoot the laser into the gold, and as the laser is grinding on the gold, these little balls come up out of the the when the laser is ablating the gold, these little balls are formed. And that's where these little balls come from, and that's why I think ball, uh, water is also involved in this whole this whole process. Uh, so the the K pearls are nothing more than electrically cre created ejecta balls. Yeah, some exactly. of them are some of them are nice and shiny. Some of them are different. Uh, some of them are different material, but uh, because of different compound. Yeah, 
because whatever the starting materials that they used to make metals, there, there must have been a long list of stuff that was in it. Could you please uh, turn this video of Lichtenberg figures so we can, uh, some people may probably didn't see it. Okay. Just a small. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This, this is this is the wrong one. See what they they do is they take an electron accelerator and they run electrons through these plates of plexi of uh, of a uh, 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 like plexiglass. And this is what the electron accelerator looks like. Now imagine something like that put in the dome, shooting electrons down into the ground. And they run them into this machine. Whoops. So the charge is reflected on this acrylic surface. The, the the electrons are shot into right there, right there it happened. Yeah. We the see the, the, the image of reflection. Yeah, the, the, the long white line on the left-hand side, I don't think it's doing anything. It's, it's the, the image is in the middle. That's where it's being just for a few seconds, right? So yeah. it's shooting electrons into those plates and it only goes down so far. I think they said halfway. So they come out with a high charge, right? 2.5 million volts. Yeah. There's your darker color. And then they discharge the electrical buildup in there. Is it similar to grounding of uh, electricity, something like this? I, I couldn't hear you over the video. What? Uh, is it similar to some grounding of electricity? No, I don't think it's not grounding. It's discharge. The reason it's discharging into that plate is because there's nowhere to ground. Oh, OK. okay. I think a bit, maybe a way to say it. Uh, now, imagine it's. Imagine instead of using these acrylic plates, it was the earth, the original earth of the ground. So they they jack up the voltage and then they discharge it, and the discharge goes horizontally up through the ground, and that's where the metal lightning the metal lightning bolts are made. That's basically the sort of the whole video. Okay. The what the way I kind of see it is uh, the earth would start out kind of like this cake, right, where the where the purple, uh, uh, well, they mine downwards, so let's start at the top. So say, let's say this uh, electron accelerator, accelerator in the dome, he starts irradiating this, this layer of earth that looks like this cake. And the electron accelerator would beam down about halfway through the orange slice, the orange layer, the second one down, right? And then they would discharge this built-up electricity in this top layer, and the metal fulgurite and the mineral fulgurite would form where the white stuff is at. Okay. Right? And the 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 red layer on top and the and the and the orange layer underneath are the containment pieces. The dimensions wouldn't be right there. I mean it wouldn't just be a tiny little sliver where they made the metal, it'd be bigger than that. Uh, but the the orange and the red slices, those are the containment rocks. Those are the clay-like material to contain the fulgurite. 
to keep the discharge going through that layer instead of all over the place, right? Okay. And so, and so when, when the discharge happens through that white area, the it's going to kind of melt the top of the red piece, right? There's going to be a cavity there. And then they're going to break, punch through what's left of that top red layer, and there's going to be like digging out that fulgurite in that picture I showed you guys earlier. Right? And then they're going to open up the top, and they're going to go down in there. And they're going to remove the top of, 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 the, of the area around where the fulgurite is, and they're going to reach down in there and pull that thing out. And then they're going to mine every area of that top layer. And then once they're down with that, they're going to go down to the yellow one. And they're going to do the same thing and keep okay. going and keep going. And this is where the whole idea of clay feet come from is because clay is the bottom of the layer and the metals are formed above the clay. So you got some clay layers in the bottom of the earth and you got an electron accelerator on the top. It shoots the beam down onto the ground, the target area. It jacks up the voltage. They discharge the voltage, and bam, a giant metal fulgurite jumps out of there. Right? And then they uh, <clears throat> they take – now, like, like this picture here, this is a fulgurite that's sitting on the floor. Now, mm -hmm. in reality, in real life, when that thing was first found, it was underneath the ground a little bit, right, a couple inches or whatever underneath the ground. <clears throat> and they would have had to dug and they dug it out, right? Now let's pretend instead of that being a, a lightning fulgurite, that's a metal fulgurite and it's giant. It's hundreds of miles wide, right? And let's pretend that you then go in there and you very carefully dig out that fulgurite. What do you have afterwards? Empty what, space. What you would have would be a channel in the shape of a lightning bolt. And on the sides of each channel would be a mesa, right? You follow it? Yep. Where the red area is in there, that would be a mesa sticking above the, the bottom of the floor of the channel. And then what they did, they took the electron accelerator again. And for each of these mesa spaces, they jacked up the voltage again. They created a fulgurite in each of the mesas. And they kept dividing them down into smaller mesas and smaller mesas and smaller mesas. And then when they get to the point where it's too small to do them again, those are what mesas are. And I like those, those, are, those are the tracks and the shapes that we see right now, actually. Yeah. Now, where I put the uh, – because I think I might have showed you railroad stuff one day on one of these. Yeah, you, you have been showing the railroads yeah. and the road systems. Yeah. Where that when they, when they let's just pretend that this is the first fulgurite they make on the top layer. That's where the train track goes around. The train track goes around the uh, uh, the channel of the very first one, and then the, the space in the middle they mine downwards, layer after layer after layer. They haul it up to the railroad track to take it away, and there would be a railroad track around each one of these spaces. Not each one of the little tiny spaces necessarily, but somewhere uh, they, they, they decide, I don't know what the optimal sizes are, but they go and, and they put the railroad tracks around the mine so the metals can be hauled out of there. The Excalibur sword. Well, I think what that symbolizes, in the beginning, you could stick the sword in because... The rock wasn't hard yet. It was a clay-like material. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then after the, after the electrical discharge, the clay-like material hardened into stone, into rock. And then the sword could not be pulled out. And that is what Excalibur, I think, symbolizes. Now, you know, terra is the word for land, right? And then yep. you got Terra's land, and then we've all heard the phrase terra firma. Terra was the original ground of the earth. Terra firma is the hardened ground of the earth that remains today. Yeah, we call it, uh, actually, in construction, it's called continent, uh, not like a, a big uh, 
thing that America or Asia now yeah. it's called continent the place where you stick all those uh, reinforcement bars in foundation before you put a, 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 a high story building on it so and they also they find this continent this firm firm earth as you can say uh, so they know they know that it's under the clay somewhere yeah i find the uh, this was near the grand canyon on the top right oh wait have i not shown i probably haven't shown you guys the box work there the, the stuff yet i oh yeah i did i showed you that box works that stuff that looked like that we showed notice, notice how the the grand canyon looks like that if you remember back what yeah box box work photo was <clears throat> now minerals and uh and metals since they're created electrically are shaped electrically and that's why copper looks like fulgurites every piece of every piece of copper doesn't look like that they all look like all kinds of crazy things but uh the shapes of them are, 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 are electrical shapes. And the Grand Canyon contained an electrical, electrically shaped piece of metal. And that's why the Grand, Grand Canyon looks like a fulgurite and a yeah, lightning bolt. There's a question. Can these patterns be described by fractal reality? By what? Oh, fractals? Fra fra fractals, yeah. Well, they say that lightning is a fractal. But for me, fractal is just a descriptive kind of word. It doesn't, in and of itself, doesn't really mean anything. It's. Uh, I think it's, it's something that uh, geometry uh, and mathematics itself is like um, a system of uh, of a person which dives into it, into the science, and gets crazy and crazy and crazy. And when he becomes crazy mathematician he becomes seeing all those fractals everywhere <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it's just my speculation guys yeah. i mean i i don't doubt that there is a, a fractal nature to electricity I'm, just I'm, something I'm, unexplainable I'm, in math I'm, is I'm, always be called fractal I'm, something yeah i'm sure it is uh but for me when i look at electricity i don't see it as, as necessarily a, a pure fractal it's a little it's more random there's some randomness to this but uh it, it definitely has a fractal nature i don't i don't i'm pretty sure that it does it's um, like you know fibonacci numbers which are like you know very interesting theory to use fibonacci everywhere as a golden yeah, ratio yeah so, yeah, yeah i'm I mean, sure that's a fractal a that's a fractal stuff it's like al alchemistry all this stuff that was researched but way back in the days and probably the, it's 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 some worth of some information but yeah. i don't actually know how to use fractals in real life i don't either I, I, that's my problem with the whole fractal thing and i don't get too deep into it because all right whether it's a fractal or not a fractal the issue of whether it's a fractal or not it's really not all that it's not the important issue yeah uh, but so that's why i just say well maybe it is it's maybe like it when is. you it's like when you see a poop on the on the grass it's a it's a poop you describe it it's a but you don't know who actually did this poop so. <laughs> that's my fractal coincidence there you go and a lot of things just look like fulgurite silver you know different kinds of gold looks like a fulgurite uh notice that that black area in the middle of that piece of gold that looks like every lake in canada if I got my little red pin out, I'd put a circle there and a circle there and a circle there. Notice how the opening in the in the uh, uh, the lightning fold right on the bottom looks like every cave opening you've ever seen. Now, like I said, the metals that they mined were gigantic. Imagine taking that piece that that person's holding there and sticking it down there on the ground. In the valleys, the, the lighter green areas in between the darker green areas had a metal fulgurite that ran through there. And those are valleys, and that's where the metal was. There was literally pieces of, of copper that laid on the land just like that in those sizes. They were massive and massive. And that's why they needed all these, these train tracks around all these quarries to carry all that stuff away. Grand Canyon would have contained just a massive uh, piece of metal in it. Uh, here's where I, I, I just took and drew in where the where the fulgurite would have been. The fulgurites are in the valleys. 
Now, when you look at a lot of these kind of places, like if you look at, like, say, maybe uh, Mount Everest, you kind of explore and examine every all the all the all the all the different uh, peaks that come out of there. You can always see where the water could flow. You all could, you know, if you were standing in there and you had that hose and you were spraying around, you look around, you could see a lower area where you know the water's going to go, because they were all set up that way. Here's another one, kind of like that. And those empty forms inside those, you know, solid, uh, solid, solidized clay structures can form the, the pathways for underground water to come on surface and create a stream and river and use that shape as a flow pattern, right? Uh, very possible. But, uh, I think they, they, they say Great Kenya has a river on the bottom. That's why I'm saying that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, there's the, you mean the Colorado River, or are you talking about a secret underground? I don't know. My friend was there and he was swimming with some native folks that were around that. He showed me the pictures that has a little river there. Oh, so I I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, I think the earth has plumbing, and I think this plumbing that the earth has is not so much caves made by electrical mining but by design that they created plumbing. our old friend richard lopez says uh, there's a boiling room somewhere uh, boiler room <laughs> <laughs> well they're hot hot things you know steam and you know you've got your geysers and you know there appears to be hot stuff coming up out of the ground in different places uh, I wouldn't doubt uh, if you think about what the earth is, how it's constructed and how it's powered, uh, do the electrical interactions of the powering of the planet create heat somewhere? And is that heat under the ground and plumbing? And does that plumbing then uh, used to move the water to the mountains to then come out as ice in the North Pole and things like that? And, volcanoes and different kinds of things uh i think the earth definitely has got some amount of plumbing going on with it for sure um, yeah each closed system has to has yeah. its maintenance so it yeah, has to because when you know here in iowa uh 90 percent oh i think it's like 90 for, it's either 90 or 90 percent of the actual ground in iowa is a farm field and when it rains you got to ask yourself, where does all that water go? It's got to go somewhere. It goes into plumbing. And then that water is pumped back up to the north, and it's pumped into where the glaciers come out. And in different places, sometimes in the tops of mountains, that the water is pumped up there. And I don't, I'm not saying necessarily mechanically pumped. It could be kind of one of those uh, kind of a pressure system where it just kind of naturally you know kind of how you might put pipes in your in your in your plant pots to assist in the movement of water right um uh, so I, I think there's definitely some plumbing going on in this picture here philip you can see these rocks are the space of the shape and lightning bolts yeah the same shape the same yeah. pattern yeah uh i don't necessarily have all these in a, a logical order but this one here i was using for something else and uh, like kind of like what are mountains uh if that guy pulled that fulgurite right out right there you got a canyon if there was another fulgurite right, right next to it like where i put in yellow and you remove that one the material between the two would be your mountain or a plateau that kind of an idea. When these metal fulgurites are being made, they create, like I said, these balls. And some of these balls get stuck in the material, the encasement material, the encasement layers, which ends up being uh, clay and sandstone and stuff like that. Uh, that happened to be a ball that just got lodged right there when it was made. It was made in that exact spot, and it stuck right there. Right there, that's another piece that was made right there and stuck right there, and for whatever reason, they left it. 
Almost looks like a piece of a fulgurite, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This uh yeah, let's go in here real fast. Uh, quartz veins and rocks in the bottom right look just like lightning bolts because uh, it's all basically a lightning bolt. You know, the Grand Canyon, they basically dug out a metal fulgurite shape very close to the one on the bottom. It was made of metal instead of rock, and they pulled it out of there. And bowl shape has lowest surface tension, so whatever it was, it was so much heat, this was in liquid form. Comment. Wait, what was in liquid form? Uh, bowl shape has lowest surface tension, so whatever it was, it was so much heat, this was in liquid form. That's what. Uh, I'm not sure what they're saying there, but yeah. was there liquid involved in this? Absolutely. Definitely liquid, liquid, liquid is a conductor, guys, as we've been discussing in the beginning. So. That's why I think of a salt water, mercury, fluorine, carbon. Uh, I don't know what the magical mix is. If I did, I'd be rich. Uh, lightning stack on a sidewalk, right? He, he was talking about uh, bowl shaped metal rock formations. Oh, like big round blocky rocky things like maybe a uh, half dome that no just the, those round you know rock formations that oh, you little round do. things yeah 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 uh, any material has a tendency to shape into a ball is what he said <laughs> oh yeah, well that seems to be right i think if the material has uh, enough time it'll make itself into a ball if it doesn't have enough time it makes itself into a blob Something like that. Uh, this laser blazing picture on the bottom and a full right on the top. It's uh, well, guys, not necessarily. I think that we saw different types of shapes. We we have spikes. We have those stalactites, stalagmites, more you know complex forms, and uh, layer type of stalagmites. Mike was showing, and uh, sectoral network type of, but you know bubbles like we have in uh, in bread or cookies and so i mean it depends on the content of each liquid that is actually involved into conducting process absolutely i, I, I totally agree with that um earlier you said asked me i think where, where the metals went well the iron that they made on by the way one of the most rarest things on earth believe it or not is native iron there's only one place, I think, in the world where there's actually native iron. I think it's, it's either in Russia or Greenland. I think maybe it's Greenland. Uh, but there's only one place in the world where there's native iron. And everybody thinks, oh, we mine iron every day. We don't mine iron. We mine iron ore, which has tiny little pieces of iron in it. And they got to sift through miles and miles and miles of yards of ground to get that that iron. Um, the native metals, uh, they, they use them, I'm sorry, the native iron uh, to build, like I said, the next earth. Because in, with my idea of what earth is, earth has a, a metal ball around it. And uh, the earth, wait, I don't have that stuff here. The earth, the earth, the earth sets in water. And like a submarine, if the water is deep enough, pressure will push onto the metal hull of the submarine, right? So on Earth, the water pushes on the metal ball. On the inside of the metal ball is a quartz ball fitting up right inside that metal ball. And the water pressure, pressure squeezes the metal ball, which in turn squeezes the quartz ball, which creates piezoelectricity. I don't know how many people know about uh, uh, quartz watches and quartz timing yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and what piezoelectricity is. But if you put pressure on quartz, it generates an electrical charge. So if you've got a quartz ball the size of the earth being compressed, 
you get piezoelectricity. And what I believe that the Earth is, the bottom half of the Earth, uh, they put the mining, uh, well, some of the mining waters of the oceans and stuff, uh, saltwater uh, uh, seas and things like that. But most of the mining water went into the bottom half of the Earth. It's salt water. Because the bottom half of the Earth is a saltwater battery, and the and the elect, electrical energy being created uh, by the quartz ball being pressed by the steel ball creates electricity that's charged in the Earth's saltwater battery below us, and that's kind of my idea of how the Earth gets where the Earth gets its power. So, in order to have places to live and places to mine and places to grow food and stuff like that, they got to keep building Earths. So the metal that they get out of the earth, they use to make the next earth. Okay. That's a good speculation, guys. It's not exactly the globe earth theory. It's just the shape of the containment system Mike is yes. talking about. But the yes. surface of uh, the actual place is rather flat or maybe not, not a globe at least, right? Yes, it's flat. You know, of course, there's mountains and things on, and unevenness to it, but overall, it, it's flat. And the water that they use to hydraulically mine come from the water that's on the outside of the Earth. They come in through a portal, like the portal of the Death Star. They always love to tell us the truth, right, Philip? They always like to show us the truth in movies and things. And right there in Star Wars, they're telling you what the Earth is. And that window thing that goes across the middle of the Death Star, that's your flat plane. Yeah, by the way, I'm I'm going to make a video about uh, documents that they received from the uh, from the captured German submarine uh, in 1945, where they had exact, you know, uh, so-called script for, for, for the German submarines to reach the so-called Agartha region which was Mike was talking about is located uh, below the ice wall somewhere where Admiral Richard Richard Byrne said that the land is uh, yeah. comparable to United States which is yeah. not uh, yet unexplored but probably there's a lot more land there and it's all connected by water passages that's right probably that's those true. types of caves like Mike said was created electrically and so they even used those maps to go there, and two, su two Russian submarines actually reached this cave system, and then they got attacked by certain objects that were moving very fast and uh, shooting at them with electric charges, and mm -hmm. so they turned around and escaped that place. I don't know if that correlates with <coughs> the, the further high jump <coughs> expedition that Admiral Byrd actually was, uh, you know, proceeding after that in two years but those experiences uh, that was actually uh, reported in in russian archives and it's not top secret anymore it's not classified because of the time period that is you know the classifi classification was released and so the guy wrote a book that guy is a uh, uh, general army which is like a second degree general uh, the, the, the the top rank general so i kind of believe that guy so he actually saw those do documents those maps those diaries of uh, german uh, submarine captains and so he also published that information in his book and called it uh passage to agarta was uh, discovered by soviets and uh, many other countries also uh, and that's why they actually made this treaty on antarctica which nobody can travel uh, below a certain degree of latitude. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. There's something definitely going on there. I, I, I've seen the. I'm sure you've seen the, the footage of where they're in the plane flying and they see the, the the green trees and the open unfrozen water and they land on it, right? Yep. Yeah. So there's definitely things going on in Antarctica, and it's not what we, what what we think it is. Uh, that's why it's all mixed together and that's why uh th there was a question why i don't have so much subscribers because we are, we are not here for the fame for, and so the, the people know that they have this tier system to facebook uh pages and groups which way they, they like you know 
assign your Facebook page or group or even your account to some certain tier system and don't let your post get further Absolutely. Than, uh, you know, covering by many other people, which algorithm Absolutely. is supposed to give you and it doesn't. So uh, then you know how to look for real information and see how uh, this relates to real life because you don't, you don't, you don't find this information in research. Nobody's talking about it. Yeah. It's total prohibited information, totally censored information. Nobody will give you anything about Antarctica ex except speculations. And when you find these actual documents showing that the people actually were using submarines to go somewhere, had a base established there and had a certain mushroom and route and this ex explanation and scripted, you know, this is just ridiculous. How, how much information do they keep away from us? A whole lot, Philip. Yeah, it's all very interesting. All this very interesting. Mike said that the surface is rather flat, but the container, the closed system, looks like it's like a bubble or something. Yeah, it's a ball. It's like a hybrid, a hybrid solution. The Earth is both round and it's flat, and we live on the flat part on the inside. And the ball is what gives us barometric pressure. The ball is what uh, 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 causes thunder. Uh, you gotta, you gotta be inside of something. And we all know that balls are stronger than boxes, and uh, that's why we're in a ball, because we have to be in a ball. If we were inside of a box, a box probably wouldn't stand up as well as a ball. It yes, makes, it makes sense that we're we're in a ball instead of uh, something else. Something else. The water that they used to mine the earth came in, like I said, through the through the wall. It didn't it didn't necessarily come up that that high. It could have come up maybe a few miles. Who knows how high? Because when you think about how they hydraulically mined in uh, in California. The water come from the tops of the mountains. They would make a dam up there, and where the water's melting, where streams are starting, whatever, and they would dam up that that water flow, and then they would send it down pipes, and yeah. just the, just the flow of the water down through pipes down the side of a mountain is enough pressure to break up these rocks. So the water coming into the earth didn't necessarily have to come from the ceiling, and it probably did come from the ceiling. It probably just come from somewhere slightly above uh the, the floor of the earth yeah probably this magnetic field that is you know structured in, in horizontal flatness like we have right but outside of this container there is no electric field which is concentrated on some surface so there is no gravity there so it can come from anywhere from up from from the side from the bottom it's still going to be flowing inside due to the pressure yeah i, I believe yeah, makes sense. And we have to have this something that is could be transparent or a opacity type of thing, like you said, quartz, or maybe somebody's uh, speculating about some glass firmament. firmament. Who knows? But we yeah, can I mean, see we can see it's blue outside. So perhaps that is just the reflection of water like we have in a pool. Yeah, it's hard to say. I say quartz just because we know quartz makes piezoelectricity. It could be something else. It could be a mixture of things. It could be some other some other mineral, some other material. I, I don't really know. But oh. it was probably a material that creates piezoelectricity. Like if you think about the, a huge pot filled of water and you have something exactly the same shape of round shape and you put it inside that pot it's going to float right yeah. so but some water will still go from the sides and go up and okay. probably feel, feel the, the 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 top of that thing so i mean that creates that itself creates some pressure for water to go up yeah. because something's pulling pushing it you know down yeah, the water yeah, comes up yeah, so yeah, yeah so that's pretty good chat that we had today. And I think everybody understood what you're talking about. Uh, I think we did well. 
Do you have any anything else? Or we are done for today. Are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, I think we're in a good. Uh, or let's good. just save more for for the next one. Yeah, we could. This is a good uh, finish in a good spot. Yeah, just for for everybody, just subscribe to Mike's group. You find out like three, four good po posts each day, right? Yeah. Mike does, and we have like some certain uh, people uh, that are already involved in the process and also posting good information. Oh yeah, a lot of people post really spectacular pictures. There's there's a number of people that post really high quality images that I've never even seen before, and uh, uh, we've got some people that really post some really good stuff. So it's uh, definitely a good group to to check out. Yeah, thanks everybody in the chat. Thanks for for your comments. I didn't see much uh, misunderstanding, but some people were. Uh, quite amazed by your work and the, the information so awesome yeah thanks a lot uh, thanks a lot everybody see you later guys thanks next chat's gonna be scheduled uh, as usual maybe once in three months or something like this yeah, because we we, 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 we we don't seek fame we don't seek fortune we don't seek uh famous being famous but we we do what we do what we can do and we're gonna do it we're not the ones that wait for this stuff to happen we make stuff happen there right? you go yeah philip thanks for having me on it was a pleasure talking to you again thanks mike see you later guys all right buddy